on renewals with a record 4.56 million allocated for gravel resheating on our unsealed road network and 3 million on a pavement rehabilitation and reseal program on our sealed road network. In addition, an allocation of $543,000 has been provided for footpaths, including $260,000 toward improvements to Murgan CBD footpath, $413,000 for drainage improvements in Blackbutt and Premier Drive in Kingroy, $334,000 for betterment work to floodways on Manar Road and Broad Creek Road, as well as $275,000 toward construction of bitumen seal on a section of Memorambi Barkers Creek Road at the Old Wondai Road intersection. Concept plans incorporating the community's feedback for the Kingroy CBD revitalization program have been finalized and final design work is now being undertaken. However, the project is dependent on council receiving grant funding. An application has been lodged under the federal government's Building Better Regions program, but we are still awaiting an outcome. If grant funding is not received, then the scope of the project will need to be revisited. Provision has also been made to reinstate town entry signs <coughs> in all our towns and villages. And now, water, wastewater, waste management, sport and recreation, and Councillor Ross Frolf is the portfolio holder for this area. Council is facing significant capital expenditure on upgrading water and wastewater infrastructure over the next five years. In order to fully understand our future demand needs and when and where this capital expenditure will be required, we need to undertake a full network analysis of both systems. An application has been made to the state government for funding under the Maturing the Infrastructure Pipeline Program 2 for the development of a regional water and wastewater strategy. This strategy would provide a review of the current status of Council's water and wastewater assets and overall networks and prepare a plan for the sustainable upgrade and renewal of these assets over a 10-year horizon. Council has provided $250,000 in its budget for this strategy and is hopeful of receiving a grant of $500,000 from the above grant program. Approximately $7.28 billion has been allocated toward the operations and maintenance of our water network with a further $1.47 million towards water main renewal or upgrades across the region. Increased operating costs and funding for future capital requirements have necessitated an increase in our water access charges. Charges for a standard 20 mm connection have risen by $39 per annum or 7%. Council's wastewater business unit has been allocated $5.35 million with $4.3 million towards operations and maintenance and $1.05 million in network renewals. Sewage charges have been increased by 2.5% in line with our general rate increase. Council's waste management operations comprise of two functions, waste collection and waste disposal. Our curbside collection is undertaken by contractor JJ Richards and is funded by a collection charge levied on each ratepayer who receives a collection service. The collection charge has been increased by $4 per annum, equivalent to $0.08 cents per collection. The operations of our four refuse tips and 13 transfer stations are covered by a waste management levy on all ratepayers across the region. Increased operational costs in this area have necessitated an increase of $14 to the levy, taking it to $142 per annum or $2.73 per week to provide waste facilities. 
The impact of the reintroduction of the state government's waste disposal levy to come into effect in 2019 on Council's operations is yet to be determined. The recently released directions paper indicates that while household waste collected by a curbside collection will be subject to the $70 per tonne levy under the above scheme, local governments will be reimbursed so that these additional costs should not have any impact on households. However, we will need to wait and see whether this reimbursement covers the additional costs to set up our landfill sites, costs to administer the scheme and pay the levy. Unfortunately, any shortfall in funds will have to be passed on to you, the ratepayer. <coughs> a lot has been made recently about the Sport and Recreation Infrastructure and Strategic Plan. All the feedback, both positive and negative, has been collated by Ross Planning and will be discussed by councillors in the near future before the final draft is presented to council for adoption. The plan provides data and direction to ensure that council is making informed decisions with a strategic focus rather than ad hoc reactions to immediate issues. It details realistic actions and solutions that reflect council and community resources and are financially sustainable. Approximately $416,000 has been provided in the budget to deliver on priorities contained in the Sport and Recreation and Strategic Plan. And now, the Portfolio of Planning and Property, the Portfolio, portfolio of Holder is Councillor Terry Fleischwasser. Council has an extensive property portfolio which it maintains and includes five administration offices and five supplementary offices. Six libraries, three of which are included with customer service centres, two art galleries, four museums and heritage facilities, two of which incorporate visitor information centres, 12 halls with seven run by council and five run by community groups, four swimming pools and two school pools, three visitor information centres, six works depots, three community unit blocks, 18 commercial and residential properties, and one private day surgery and medical suites managed by a private operator. During 2017-18, Council was successful in receiving a grant from the State Government to undertake a building condition assessment to determine the condition of these assets. This project is due for completion by December this year. Once this data is received, we will have a better understanding of our future maintenance and capital renewal expenditure for these assets. Council will then be in a position to determine if we can financially continue to maintain all of these assets, and if not, have discussions with the community on their future. Swimming pools continue to be problematic for Council. They are a high risk asset and as a result require constant maintenance and compliance rules. Provision has been made in this budget to commence an investigation into the condition of the underground assets of our two oldest pool, pool facilities in Kingroy and Mergen. And if further funds become available, then Wandai and finally Nanango will be assessed. It is anticipated that significant capital expenditure on these pools is going to be needed over the next few years once the above assessment is completed. To that end, provision has been made to reserve $750,000 from the property budget this year and a further $750,000 from the 2019-20 budget toward these future costs. The assessment and design for the renovation of the Nanango Administration Office and Library is continuing. The proposed re re uh, renovation will include the replacement of the roof, an upgrade to electrical and air conditioning systems, and a restructure of the office layout to incorporate the library 
and customer service areas. 1.4 million has been allocated for these works once the final design and scope of works is identified. Money was put aside in the 2017-18 budget to purchase the land on which Ringsfield House and Brighthaven units are, are located in Nanango from the state government. The original purpose of the, of, of the reserve is no longer applicable and the government is keen to freehold it back to council. Negotiations have not yet been finalised, so these funds have been carried over into the 2018-19 budget. In line with council's decision to not continue with its community housing in Mergen, a provision of $160,000 has been allocated to pay out the capital funding agreement with the Department of Housing and Public Works to relinquish these facilities. Other minor works in the Capital Works program include $65,000 to replace the heat pump at the South Burnett Aquatic Centre in Denango, $10,000 for repairs to the chimney at Ringsfield House, and $40,000 to demolish the toilet block and tidy up the old caravan park site in Wondai. $217,050 has also been set aside for any urgent works identified from the Building Condition Assessment Report mentioned previously. Work on development of a local government infrastructure plan, known as Belgium, which outlines the required trunk infrastructure to support development within the region's towns, should be completed by the end of July 2018.